Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trivia Ronin. I'm your host, Matt McNelly. Whether you're joining us live on Zoom or Twitch or after the fact on YouTube, welcome. Grab your pen and paper. We're happy to have you. Quick breakdown of the rules. One, we are honor code here and you keep your own score. Feel free to cheat because you get nothing. Two, after each question, you get 45 seconds to answer. Absolutely do not show your answer until the time is up. You know, you don't want to be that person. Tonight, there's going to be 30 questions, one point each, and a story question at the end worth 10 points for a total of 40. Some, a few questions have bonus points too. Don't worry about numbers. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's play Trivia Ronin. Question one. Here we go. For green texters, Android phones use a sweet treat naming system. Version 6.0 was called Marshmallow 7.0 Nougat. What was the name of version 8.0? 45 seconds on the clock starts now. What's version 8.0? It's not the current version. But it is a sweet treat. You might know. Don't show it yet? Oh, okay, got it. Do I lock the image slideshow, Doug? Right? Nailed it. Fixed yeah. it. Fixed it. No one heard that. Only There's no one. technical problems in this. Oh, where's the timer? Oh, it did the other Two. timer. Cool. All right, great. We're going to call this like 10 seconds left. <laughs> Next time we'll have a timer, I promise. Everything's going great. Wednesdays. We drink less, but, you know, we don't do as well. Five, four, three, two. If iPhone is a Hydrox, the answer to this is... Oreo. I'm as surprised as you are, honestly. I thought that was a brand name. Just wanted to throw that out there. But Oreo was the answer. Nobody got it, so don't worry about it. Question number two. Away we go. In 1982, Washington football team's Mark Mosley won the NFL MVP award. No one in his position has won it in the almost 40 years since. What position did he play? Football. 45 seconds on the clock for real this time. Mark Mosley, the Mark Mosley. What position did he play? 36 seconds. He was the MVP of the league in 1982. Doesn't matter what the team was called because they're not called that anymore. Thank goodness. 25 seconds on the clock. Mark Mosley, MVP. I'll give you the old 18 second hint. It was a strike shortened season. Don't know if that means anything, but it is true. 10 seconds left. What did Mark Mosley play in foosball? Not foosball, football. Two, one. The answer is kicker. Show him. Linebacker, no safety, no. I'll let you show him next time. I did go straight to that. I'm used to not having people. So excited to have people. But kicker was the answer. A few of you got it. Uh, only two kickers ever have won it. And the other time, the guy played four other positions. So it doesn't really count. Question number three is straight away. Yes, nailed it. Uh, <laughs> question three, what film won best picture at this year's Oscars? I know, it feels like a million years ago. 45 seconds on the clock. We did have Oscars in the year 2020. What was the best picture? I know, I know. Quarantine brain questions are nearly impossible. Best picture this year's Oscars, 31 seconds on the clock. Just keep punching in that number. Yeah. The Spotify is being that number, which is interesting. But this is fun, we're learning so much. Best picture this year's Oscars, 16 seconds left. I don't remember any other things about this Oscars, so. There were movies. Remember when we went to movie theaters? Three, two, one, show them everybody. Best picture this year. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Everybody got it. Our brains aren't fully broken. Parasite. Parasite was the answer. Boon Jung Ho's Parasite, good flick. Question number four, flying right along. Despite what Toto claimed, this Tanzanian national park is actually 200 miles away from this mountain. Oh no, I did this twice, didn't I? Let's call the mountain Kilimanjaro. <laughs> That'll make it easier on you. 
Despite what Toto claimed, this Tanzanian national park is actually 200 miles away from Mount Kilimanjaro. 45 seconds on the clock. Mount Kilimanjaro. Toto is a band also, not the dog from The Wizard of Oz. 30 seconds left. What Tanzanian National Park? Don't listen to Toto, guys. I mean, listen to him, because they did a good song. 10 seconds left. It's a song about a continent, if that helps you. Five, four, three. I hear the drums echo in the night. Show us the answer, everybody. Da, 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 da. Tansy's Adventure Zone is my favorite answer so far. Cedar Point's nice, but Serengeti was what we were looking for. I hear the rains down in Africa. Serengeti. It's in there. It's in the song. You'll know. Question number five. The two top grossing films of 1984 featured actors from what long-running TV show? television program 45 seconds on the clock start now two different movies were the one and two and they were both on the same show top grossing movies 1984 good year i see james going through his film school knowledge right there he's bam 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 he knows all five top grossing movies from that year so he'll be fine 22 seconds left. The two top grossing films of 1984 featured actors from what long running television program? Eight seconds left. What long running television show? I would argue maybe the longest running, potentially, aside from Meet the Press, because the answer Saturday Night Live. Show them. It was Saturday Night Live. I went too fast. It's not MASH. It's <laughs> Saturday Night Live. It was Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy. LA Law is a good guess, Stephen. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop and Ghostbusters were the two top grossing movies of that year. That's a good question, but I think it might be 85. According to Wikipedia, Doug thinks it was E.T. It wasn't. All right, this one's easy, and I'm going to start actually letting you guys answer. Over, under question. So if you're unfamiliar with that, over, under the number 20. ACDC has 20 songs with the word rock in the title. So you pick the over if you think they have more or the under if you think they have less. 45 seconds on the clock. The answer is not 20. I'll tell you that. It's either more than 20 or less than 20. Over under the Australian rock group ACDC has 20 songs with the word rock in the title. I know they have one. For those about to rock, we salute you. I'll give you that one for free. Sure. You shook me all night long, not rock. So that's one that they don't have. 10 seconds left, over, under, ACDC, 20 songs with the word rock in the title. Five, four, three, two, one. Guess them, guys. Show me the guesses. Oh, nail it. Over, under, over, over, over. All right, well, sad for my old team. Over has it. 21 songs with rock in the title. They, <laughs> they, have, they had a genre, and they stuck with it. All right, question number seven. This one's a head-scratcher a little bit. What is the best-selling video game of all time by units sold? I'm a nerd. 45 seconds on the clock. Best-selling video game of all time by units. Thirty-six seconds on the clock. What is the best-selling video game of all time? It's got to be one of them. So many people play them. It's a thing. They've been around since the 80s. What could be the best-selling one? Got me. I know because I looked it up today. But we'll figure it out. 14 seconds left. What is the best-selling Vigi game of all time by units sold? Not physical, just if you even bought it online. Best-selling game of all time by units, even if you bought it online. If you need to change, you can change. I'll give Doug two seconds because he's mad. Show him, everybody. 
Super Mario Brothers, great guess. Zelda, great guess. Grand Theft Auto, I knew no one would get this. That's why I'm a jerky person. It's Minecraft, guys. Ah! It's that game your nephew plays that you're confused by. Uh, 200,000 copies of Minecraft sold in the world. Question number eight. The Richter scale measures earthquakes and the Saphir Simpson scale, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, measure, measures hurricanes. What does the Fujita scale measure? 45 seconds on the clock. What does the Fujita scale measure? Not Scott Fujita, famed offensive lineman. I don't know why I know that. He wasn't even a bear. Uh, what does the Fujita scale measure? 35 seconds left. Some folks are mad about it. Totally fair. What does the Fujita scale measure? He's cha Doug's changing it over here. Richter scale measures earthquakes. Saphir Simpson scale hurricanes. What does the Fujita scale measure? 13, 12, 10, 6, 5, 4. I know you got it. 3, 2, 1. It is a show them. Tornado, 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 tornado. Vol oh, I thought, oh, typhoon, close. Volcano, good guess. Not tornadoes. Tornadoes was the answer. If you saw the movie Twister, F5, all that. All them Fs stand for Fujita. Question nine. You know I had to throw one of these in here. In the theater, what is the name for the wall and arch that separates the stage from the house? 45 seconds left. And by the way, in the theater, the house refers to the audience. If you want me to use some gauche terminology. 38 seconds. What's the name for the wall and arch that separates the stage from the house? The arch is usually called the blank arch, by the way. The wall is the thing that's actually named. There's 23 seconds left, if that helps anyone. In the theater, what's the name of that thing? Blocks you from seeing, seeing the actors smoking cigarettes between scenes. Vital. 10 seconds left. What's the name of that thing? What's it called? Five, four, three, two. Show them, everybody. What do we got? Ah, thank you, Doug. Doug with the same opinion as me. Pitt is a good guess. Marissa's got it. Julia's got it. Proscenium was the answer. I'm not about spelling here, guys. But that's how it's spelled, if you care. The proscenium wall. That's the thing that, you know, keeps the illusion alive. Question 10. We're keeping it moving. Question 10, true or false? Nice easy one here. The Oxford English Dictionary has an entry for the poop emoji. Is that true or false? 45 seconds on the clock. The poop emoji is in the Oxford English Dictionary. Why not? Look at the world nowadays, of course. Or of course not. Snooty British people, you know how they feel about emojis, right? Or do they? 30 seconds left. True or false? Two two answers to pick between. <laughs> That's how you say it, right? Two answers to pick between. Between of which betweenst to pick. Twelve seconds left. True or false? The Oxford English Dictionary is an entry for the poop emoji. If you're not familiar, it's a little poop. Why are you not familiar with the poop emoji? Three, two, one. Show them, everybody. Do they have an entry for this? I see a false, I see a true, I see a false, I see a true, I see three falses, two trues. The answer is false. They have an entry for the word emoji, but no actual emojis themselves have made it into the OED yet. They did say the word of the year in 2015 was, the, was this one. This one? That was the word of the year one year. Cool scores, Doug wants to keep it moving. Show me your scores, everybody, out of 10. <laughs> Doug says, I mean, you can hold them up. Five's pretty good. Four. Steven, where you at? Uno. Uno's great. I like that. All right, great. Oh, one, one minute. It's too many to tally. A hot three. Guys, well, that is literally two points separating everybody. So don't even worry about it. Uh, next round's easier, I promise. Question number 11. Away we go. Plinko. Is one of the most popular games on this long-running game show. I said games twice. I don't like doing that, but, you know, I couldn't think of another word. 
brains. Plinko is one of the most popular games on this long-running game show. What show's got Plinko in it? If you know, you know. Plinko. It's a great one. You could win so much on this one. This was always the good one. It's the one you wanted if you were on there. 14 seconds left. Plinko is one of the most popular games on this long running game show. Which game? Don't forget to spay and neuter your pets, everybody. Show us your answers. Let's see it. Yes, indeed. The price is right. Everybody's got it. It is the price is right. And obviously, it's been great ever since Drew Carey took over. We can all agree. Question number 12. Rembrandt and Caravaggio are known for using this painting technique, which comes from the Italian words for light dark. 45 seconds on the clock. Start now. Basically, if you're a Price is Right fan, you should also know this one. I feel like that Venn diagram exists. Rembrandt and Caravaggio are known for using this painting technique, which comes from the Italian words for light dark. Shut up. <laughs> Shut I up! I, I can't mute you. I know. Doug can't mute me, so I'm talking extra loud. Light dark. I can barely remember the Italian word for window. That's your checkout question for the night. 18 seconds. I know. This is one of those words you... Yeah. I'm really glad I didn't ask myself this question. Seven seconds left. I'm going to shut up so Doug can think. Show them. Show them, everybody. Noir is close. Crescendo is actually even closer. Minimalism is close. Nobody's going to get this. This is an annoying one. It is... No! Charoscuro! No, Charoscuro! God damn it! Doug had it. Doug had it in his brain. It's all... Charoscuro, I believe, is what you're looking for, Stephen. But yes, very close. Question 13. I would have given you half credit if you wrote that. Uh, which American city has the same black and gold coloration for all their major sports teams? 45 seconds on the clock. If you were listening at the beginning, I think you know this one. Which American city has the same black and gold coloration for all their major league sports teams? They got a hockey team. They got a baseball team. They got a football team. They don't have a basketball, don't have a basketball team. But if they did, everyone would hate them. Did anybody get Charoscuro? <laughs> no, nobody got that. Yeah. Nobody got that. Don't worry about it. Uh, all their major sports teams are the same color. Black and gold is what they say, although Wiz Khalifa would argue black and yellow. If that helps. That's your 10-second hint. You didn't know it by now. You now know it. Show it. What do we got? What city is that in America? <laughs> Doug says, fuck them. He's right. Everybody else says, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh PA is right. Put some fries on your sandwiches. Shout out to James Kendall. There's your Pittsburgh question for the evening. Pittsburgh PA. All their teams, same color, just so they don't get confused. All right, question 14, three-pointer. What's in a red-headed slut? One point for each ingredient. What are the three ingredients, 45 seconds, in a red-headed slut? And let's please get rid of this drink at some point in the future, at least the name. What's in a redheaded slut? I don't, I want to say I haven't had one since college, but I don't think that's true because I work in a bar. I'm sure someone left one and I probably drank it. Yep, yep, but that's my life. Anyway, 20 seconds left. What's in a redheaded slut? One point for each ingredient. All these terrible cocktails, hint, each ingredient is a part of the name in a very terrible, vulgar way because the bartending industry has been run by men for too long. Four, three, two, one, show them. What do we see? Red Bull, Jaeger, and Grenadine, I would drink that. What'd you call me? Nailed it, Julia. Uh, <laughs> Jaeger Schnapps, Cranberry is the correct answer. I saw one of those. It is Jaegermeister. It's not vodka. It's not vodka, unfortunately. Jaegermeister, Peach Schnapps, and Cranberry Juice. The red is the cranberry, the peach schnapps is the slut, the head is the Jaeger, I don't know. Uh, question 15, moving right along. 
Derek Smalls, Nigel Tuvnall, David St. Ubbins, the oft-forgotten Viv Savage, and a rotating roster of mostly deceased drummers are the members of what band? 45 seconds on the clock. All of them are off for God. Is, Doug has a good point. All of them can be forgotten by anyone, really. But Viv Savage is the is the man who gets left behind. Viv Savage on the keys. I will give you that. I'll also tell you, Derek Smalls lead guitar. Nigel Tuvnell lead guitar. David St. Hubbins. Oh, I lied. Sorry. Nigel Tuvnell lead guitar. David St. Hubbins lead lead guitar. Derek Smalls on the bass. 12 seconds left. What band is this? Five, four, three, two. They are a real band, despite starting as a fictional band. Please show them. Ah, shit. There it is. Got Van Halen, me. wrong, but good guess. Rolling Stones, wrong. It is Spinal Tap. Yep. It's Spinal Tap, isn't it? Oh, well, you, you can't print that in a newspaper. Spinal Tap was the answer. Of that question. I know, it's it's brutal. If I had said it in an accent, we all would have gotten it. Uh, question number 16. Also, that is helpful. Also, one of them choked on vomit, but they didn't know whose vomit it was. And you can't really dust for vomit, can you? That's in the movie. Question 16. In weightlifting, moving a barbell from the floor to above your head in one uninterrupted motion is called what? 45 seconds. What do you call it? And you feel free to act it out, everybody. <laughs> Moving a barbell from the floor to above, Steven's got it, to above your head in one motion is called what? 33 seconds. I will just give you a small hint. It is not. There is a name for the one that takes two motions. And that's a different thing. There's your 20 second hint right there. One motion. 12 seconds. How do you get? Got to get that bar up, man. Oh, I'm so glad I don't do CrossFit anymore, but we did say that a lot. Four, three, two, one. Show them. What's it called? Also a Guy Ritchie movie. CrossFit, hey. powerlift, deadlift. Doug got it. Snatch is the answer. The snatch. They all have dirty terms. The snatch feels like the dirtiest in weightlifting, but the snatch is the answer. Keeping it moving. Question 17. Classic bar trivia question. Who's the only person to serve as both, both president and vice president without being elected to either office? Who's that guy? Start. Give you a hint. He started as vice president, then became president. Started as something before vice president as well. 40 seconds on the clock. Who is this guy? Every good bar trivia has to have this question at some point. It's a guy. Hint. Sadly. Who's the guy who got to who got the privilege of being never having to be elected? This might change in November. We'll see what happens with the postal service. Eight seconds left. He's not a despot. He was just a president. Also played by Chevy Chase and notoriously accident prone. Show him. Damn it. I was going to put it. Gerald Ford, dead today. Gerald Ford is the answer. LBJ and Jimmy Carter are not. Gerald Ford. Oh, I like Chester Arthur, though. Gerald Ford. This guy. Nixon resigned. He gets, uh, or first Spiro Agnew resigns. He becomes vice president. Then Nixon resigns. He gets the big job. The job nobody wants, the worst job in America. Question 18, one of my favorites right now. Russell Tyrone Jones, known for both his enthusiasm for the Brooklyn Zoo and liking it raw, is better known by what stage name? 45 seconds on the clock. Russell Tyrone Jones, known for both his enthusiasm for the Brooklyn Zoo and liking it raw, better known by what stage name? Uh, yes, I believe yes. Yes, yes, he does. That's a good, I'm going to give you the Doug hint in 10 seconds because it's a good one. Oh, baby. 
Who's this guy? This is his real name. What's his stage name? 10 seconds left. He's also known for collecting unemployment just like the rest of us. That's your 10 second hint. Three, two, oh, baby, shimmy, shimmy, ya, yeah, shimmy, am, shimmy, show him. I think we all got it, so I already put it up. No, interesting. ODB, Dirt McGirt, the old dirty Chinese restaurant. Well done, Steven. All of those are his other names. Old Dirty Bastard's what we were looking for, though. Old Dirty Bastard. Rest in peace. Died of a drug overdose. Stinking with music. Question 19, flying along. Who was the lead singer for the Sex Pistols? Famous punk band. Who was the lead singer for the Sex Pistols? God Save the Queen. Who was the lead singer for the Sex Pistols? 45 seconds going now. Punk history in the making. Or already been made. The Sex Pistols have been gone for a while. But who was the lead singer for the Sex Pistols? These guys got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and declined to go because they said it was a piss den. Fun fact. Extra points for ODB answers? Sure. Give yourself 100 points for all of ODB's nicknames. I liked it. I knew Kira's girl. That you did after the fact, which is important. Five seconds left. Who is the lead singer for the Sex Pistols? Go ahead and show them. Who's got it? Who knows they're punk? Not many people. Iggy Pop's a good guess, but Steven had this one. It was... Or no, I'm sorry. It was not Sid Vicious. I lied about it, Steven. It's... Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten's the lead singer. Sid, Sid Vicious, bassist. Bassist of the Sex Pistols. So close. It's almost over, guys. I promise. And this one's kind of fun if you know your current events. Question number 20. Despite the president of this religious school being exposed as having a bit of a cuckold fetish, it has the largest enrollment of any university in the United States. 45 seconds on the clock. What is the largest university in the United States? And the president just stepped down of this school. It is a religious institution. Religiously backed school. Won't tell you the religion, but it is America. You know what happens here. 28 seconds left. Despite the president of this religious school recently being exposed as having a bit of a cuckold fetish, it has the largest enrollment of any university in the United States. President, as of yesterday, stepped down from this school. Son of the original president of this school, if that helps anyone. 10 seconds left. Question number 20. What's the name of that school? It has the largest enrollment in the United States. Two, one, it's not a state school, it's a religious school. Of course it is. Ooh, I see some, I see others. Some people got this, this is good. Many people got this. Liberty University. Liberty University and Jerry Falwell Jr. Uh, who uh, was uh, in a long-term relationship where a man would have sex with his wife. Good for him. Uh, you can be into whatever. Just for the record, you can be into whatever, but practice what you preach, that's all. All right, guys, let's, there you go, Steven. Uh, what are the scores? What do we got? Throw them up. Doug, you're, I'm seeing a 12 on Doug. Making a comeback this round. Throw up them scores. Nice, seven, 13. There they are. All right. Guys, next one's just pictures. Pictures are gonna be way easy, and it's anyone's game, really, at this point. We got a 12 and a 13. You got seven. It's time for a comeback. Right now, let's go get some more drinks. Take a break. We'll be back in three. Miss y'all already. Question, are we ready? Thumbs up. It's happening. Question one goes now. This is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. What borough of New York City does she represent? What borough does she represent? 45 seconds on the clock. Nope, three minutes on the clock. Now 45 seconds on the clock. What borough does she represent? It is one of the five. I know. Keep thinking, Doug. I think we talked about this yesterday. Got what <laughs> What borough does AOC represent? Part of the squad. 30 seconds left. Pick a borough. Go with it. She's from one of them. Uh, nothing. Oh, wait. It did pop up. But I think that's old. It's still cool. 
is fine again. It's fine. It's fine. On your turn. This just continues to work somehow. 11 seconds left. What borough does AOC represent? Doug says I got this wrong. Five, four, three, two. Show them. Where is she from? What borough? Yes, yes, no, yes. The Bronx. Look for the Bronx on this one. AOC is from the... She's, she's just Jenny from the block in the Bronx, but she's AOC instead. Next question, question two. Boom, it works. Oh, it beeped, but I'll fix that. What state flag is this? What state is this flag from? 45 seconds on the clock. What state flag is this? Big hint right in the middle of it. What state flag is this? <laughs> You'll get it. It's right in the middle. Something to know about. It. It's not the flag of your Chicago Cubs. I will give you that. Although it is the same letter. What American, sorry, American state flag is this? That's important. That was rude, honestly. What American state flag is this? 12 seconds left. What state's flag is this flag from? Where at? Thank you, Darcy. Where is this flag from? Two seconds left. Show me your answers. What do we think? Where's it from? Doug didn't get this one wrong. Connecticut's a good guess. It's the other one. Colorado. They're looking for Colorado is the answer on that one. The state flag of the great state of Colorado. Very original. Next question. Who is this person? This one's just a straight up. Who are you looking at? 45 seconds on the clock. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at in this one? First and last name. I think first and last name on this one, right? Let's go first and last name because I feel like if you know the first name, you know the last name. And if you don't, you know neither name. Who's this person? Famous for cheeks. Plays the trumpet. That's that's a gimme. Trumpeter from back in the day. Uh, it's a funky trumpet. I think a, a trumpet. It, oh, it might be a cornet. Doug's telling me my uh, my judges are telling me it might be not a trumpet, but this person's a famous trumpeter. Five, four, three, two, one. I know what you're gonna guess. If you don't know it, show him. Yep, Stephen fell in the trap. Yep, everybody else fell in the trap. Doug did not, however. Dizzy Gillespie is who we're looking at. Jazz great Dizzy Gillespie, known for his cheeks. And it looks vaguely like Louis Armstrong, so it's fine. Uh, they're both black. <laughs> they're both black trumpeters, so at least you have that. Next question. This logo is on the cover of a 90s acid jazz album, and the artist has put it on the cover of every album since, including... I'll just throw this in there. An album where he had a song in the movie Napoleon Dynamite. That's your long question. What recording artist is this? 45 seconds. Who's this recording artist? This logo is associated with this one recording artist. Every album has this on the cover of it. He's known for funny hats. Maybe that'll help. Known for funny hats. How stumped is everybody? I feel like I feel like the old Lawrence is not stumped. So I would give more hints, but I'm a partisan. You can't, <laughs> you can't teach old. Can't. <laughs> Acid jazz. Excellent genre. Don't even know if it exists anymore. I'm mad about this question too, honestly, but I'm a big fan of this artist. This album's called Traveling Without Moving. Also, Emergency on Planet Earth. Also, yep, let's see him. Yeah, let's see him. Whoa, more people got this than I thought. All right, yeah, three out of five. It is Jamiroquai. Virtual insanity right now here on this trivia. I know what I'm doing. I'm traveling without moving. I'll just keep naming them. Can't heat my heels tonight. But three out of five, that's pretty good. Good work, everybody. We all know our random ass jazz musicians from the mid-90s. Next question. Who's this? Who are we looking at? Who are we looking at here? I mean, I could tell you like what era he's from, but you got eyes. This was in a photo from 1973, I'll tell you that at least. Who is this person? 
You've learned about this person somewhere. Probably history class. Who's this guy? He's got great hair, I will say that. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? This is like the main portrait of him also. Not many portraits, because, you know, not that easy to look at. 10 seconds left, sorry. Don't tell his kids. Five, four, three, two. I don't know if they're still around. Show them. Good, good, no, good. Hamilton's a guest, Thomas Jefferson's a guest. It's not, it's John Adams. Second president of the United States, first vice president of the United States, John Adams. Fat and ugly. Fat and ugly. The rest of them look good, that's why they put them on money. This guy, not so much, sorry John. Next question. Who's this person? What's his name? You know him from The Hobbit. You know him from the British office. 45 seconds. What's this actor's name? He's the one white guy in Black Panther. What's his name? Not in Black Panther. He is in Black Panther. No, no, no. Right? What are you asking? No, no, no. What's his real name in real life? Actor. Actor name. Thank you, Doug. To clarify, what is this actor's name? I was just mentioning he's in. What a friendly chap. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old dirty bastard. This guy. Young, clean. Son of two parents, I think. This person. Who is this person? Eight seconds left. What's his, what's the actor's name? I know. It's not Tim. It's not Jim either. What do we got? Let's see him. What's his name? Doug got it. Bilbo's a guess but it's not right. He did play it. Yes, two people got it. Martin Freeman. It's this person's name. Martin Freeman, I know. Now you won't forget. I just wanted people to know his name because he's a good actor. That's all. He does great. Martin Freeman, next question. Oh, Office Season 1 is a good one. Speaking of The Office, we're rolling right into it. Good. Bye. What? <laughs> what is... He is also Fargo Season 1. Speaking of The Office. He's also in Sherlock. He's also in trouble. Everybody talk his... now. Everybody talk now. Let's do his IMDb pitch. We'll He's stop. in the Ali G movie. He's in the Ali G movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? We got any? This is Dwight Schrute's car. You were about to write that. What's the make and model? <laughs> Start. If you get the make, I'll give you a point. And if you have good eyes, it's in the picture. Oh. So you can look real close. See if you can see it. Get the point. Make and model. Can you get the uh, eyeball underneath for the text? Eyeball it's underneath the picture. Oh, I got it. Yes, so we will undo the text. Got it. Cool. Good eye, Doug. 18 seconds left. What's the make and model of Dwight Schrute's car? You don't need to know the year. I've seen it every episode. I know you've all been watched The Office twice at this point. What's the make and model of the car? Eight seconds left. All right, let's see him. Yes, yes, few people got him, no, yes. So if you got Pontiac, that's one point. It's a Pontiac Trans Am Firebird. So a Pontiac Firebird will get you the points. Pontiac Firebird, the answer. Well done, random car fact knowers. Next question. This is one of my favorites. What is the name? This is a drum machine from the early 90s oh. and it has a numerical name that's blacked out what is the name of this drum machine it is the most famous drum machine in hip-hop 45 seconds not just from the early 90s it's used in almost everything i mean not anymore but it was for a long time and then it even got an homage later on from another recording artist which if you guys keep looking stumped i'll give you that second fact 30 seconds left 27. Everybody still looks pretty mad about this. At 20 seconds, here it comes. Kanye West did an album with the number in its title. It was an homage to this drum machine. Kanye West, Julia thinks she has it. You've heard of Kanye West, right? Have we heard of Kanye West for president? West 2020? No time left. Show him, everybody. 
I know. <gasps> Steven got it. Ooh, yes, and Lawrence got it. Chris got it. Chris got it. Doug, wow, everybody got it. Awesome. It is an 808 machine, everybody. <laughs> Normally known as an 808 machine. I'm very happy everybody got this one. Yes, 808s and Heartbreak is the Kanye album. 808 machine is what we're looking for. Nice. Let's see if we have another one. Oh, what place is this? Where are we in this photo? I'm there. Can't go there right now, but I'm there in this. This makes me happy. Where am I? 45 seconds on the clock. What's this uh, place? Be more specific. Where? Oh, sorry. Not what city. Thank you, Doug. This uh, I guess we could say, yeah, this is a museum. What museum is it? That might be too easy, but we'll see. Eh, we need a gimme in here somewhere. These have been annoying. It's too hard. <laughs> Just give them that. Yep. This is a place that has a famous pyramid. I think it's an IMP, but eh, probably not. I just say everything's an IMP. It's the only thing I know about architecture. 12 seconds left. Where are we in this photo? Where am I right now? I'm sort of in the ground, but what's where? where is this whole thing? One second. Where are we, guys? Where's this place? Show me. What museum? And spelling doesn't count. Don't worry. Yes, yes, yes. No. But it's the Louvre. We're at the Louvre, everybody. Yay. I think that is that all. Are we going to go back to AOC? Let's find out. No, we're not. Question. Yes, my favorite question. What group is this? There was an homage to it earlier. What hip hop group is pictured here? A bit older in this picture than when they were working, but who are these guys? They're a hip hop group. RIP, dude. Steven gave you the answer. If you know what group he was in. He was dead by the time this photo was taken, however, so not in the photo. Alas, I know, RIP every day. What rap group is this in this picture? Extra points if you can list every single person in this no. picture. No, I don't have time for that. Who's got time for that? I know, that would be you too much. You can do it, that's not fair. Uh, I don't know if I can do it, honestly. Do it. The back row it. seems tough. Three seconds left, two, one. In this picture, who do we got? Yep, 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 yep. We've got the Rizza, the Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard is not here. Inspector Deck, Raekwon, the Chef, and the Method Man, among others. This is the Wu-Tang Clan, guys. Good work. Good work, everybody. We all got Wu. Wu-Tang Clan. Boom. Throw them up. Uh, this is the Wu-Tang Clan. Next question is AOC. Good to see you again, AOC. We'll just keep up here. So now is going to be story time after the break, correct? We're going to take another break, team. How's everybody doing? How are the scores looking? 21? I'm seeing that. Steven's just got thumbs up, which I'm totally into. I think that's how we should do it from now on. It's just like, I have this many. We got thumbs up scores. 11's great. 17's great. 20's great. Ooh, we're close. 11. So 20 and 21. Doug versus my old team, man. This is serious. Take a three minute break. We all got to get our heads together. Um, I'm sorry. That was rude. Uh, we all got to get our heads together. Back in three minutes. Bye. True. Uh, tonight's story uh, is about a founding father. That's what you would probably expect from me. Um, however, not Washington, not Madison, not Jefferson. In fact, not even a founding father of the United States. This man founded a different country. So it's about him and his story uh, and what that country is. The man's name is Lee Kuan Yew. Uh, he was born in 1923. Smart guy, educated at the London School of Economics, uh, went to law school at Cambridge, practiced law in England. But born in 23, when he was younger, uh, his country was invaded by the Japanese in World War II. And in order to survive, Lee Kuan Yew, I call him LKY, so we're just going to call him LKY from now on. It's a little easier that way. LKY learns Japanese and works for the Japanese government in this country. Uh, for the years of occupation. Um, he taught the language to himself and then legit dodged a bullet at the end of the Japanese occupation because there was a day when the Japanese were marching anyone of Chinese descent to the coast to then machine gun them. The Japanese government acknowledges this. They say they killed 5,000 people of Chinese descent in this country. Uh, LKY argues it's closer to 70,000. But the only reason he didn't get machine gunned is he could speak Japanese and he told the soldier he was walking with that he needed to grab something real quick back home and got to go home and escaped. So he escapes that, 
again. He goes to England, studies, uh, studies at fancy schools, learns a whole bunch, stays in England, works on political campaigns in England for a while, and then decides he wants to go back to his home country, still a colony of England at this point, um, and he wants to found a political party. So he does, founds the People's Action Party in this country. Um, he becomes a big, active political person all through the 50s, while Britain was starting to give up rights to their colonies, right? So slowly but surely, they're gaining a few more rights. Um, they start to get a little bit of self-determination, but LKY realizes he's from a country that has no natural resources. This place has no arable land. This place has no fresh water. So he goes, guys, here's what we gotta do. We gotta join up with a neighboring country that has those things. Who's closest? Malaysia happens to be right nearby. So he says, we're gonna join up with Malaysia. They're independent too. We're gonna hop on with them. Malaysia says, sure, come join the party. However, here's the problem. Malaysia has these laws called Bumiputra laws, which means son of the soil. So in Malaysia, ethnic Malaysians get first dibs on government jobs, on starting businesses, on buying property, on all that stuff. And anybody else is a second class citizen to that. And they've always protected that. They've always, they have these laws to this day. If you think that's messed up, sidebar, look up redlining in the United States. We did it too. So anyway, uh, they start to say, well, the country in question we're talking about, they're not all Malay. They're a bunch of things. LKY is Chinese. So I don't know if we want them around. Should we give them a vote? I don't think so. So they start to doubt it. So LKY goes, no, 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 we got to stick this out. He goes to Kuala Lumpur and speaks in front of the parliament of Malaysia. And he says to them in this rousing speech in Malaysian, by the way, he teaches himself Bahasa Malaya. That's four languages at this point. Says to them in Malaysian, pleads the case for his nation. The Malays, unfortunately, it backfires. They're offended because he's actually so eloquent that they think he's making them look stupid. So they vote 126 to none to expel this country. LKY goes back home, he gets on TV. And they ask him, uh, what happened? So he starts to talk about what happened and essentially, well, I don't know the way forward for us because I, did, I can't imagine a way forward without us having these important things. He starts to cry on television. He's the leader of this, of this political party. He's the leader of this country, the de facto leader. Starts crying, ends the interview, leaves and goes into hiding so he's gone he's in hiding people can't find him they don't know what to do again there's no system in place right now in this in this place so they just don't know what to do then six weeks later he comes out of hiding and he's like i got it i got a plan so he starts to make moves on what is essentially has to be has to happen so he goes to the united nations he says we're a country now they say sure Sure, your country. So they become a country August 9th, 1965. Uh, they become a nation. Then he goes, gets a bunch of defense deals with people because he doesn't have an army. Um, he starts realizing the only way to make money there is to reach out to multinational companies and bring them in because that's the only way they're going to get the economy going. He sets up the strongest banking system in the region and the most stable currency. So he says, come on in. We're open for business. Um, he develops a national identity from scratch. Everybody who lived here before was just like, eh, I'm hanging out. He develops this national identity. He develops a public housing system that to this day, 80% of people live in, in this country. 80% of the populace is in nice public housing. Um, they tax cars at 100% throughout this time. They take that tax, they put it into subsidizing taxi cabs and building a world-class mass transit system. Uh, they even put family planning in place because they're small. So you have two kids in this country. And then if you have a third, you actually have to pay more taxes. Also, after two kids, they subsidize you getting a vasectomy just to keep the population down. Fun fact. So he takes over all these aspects of this whole country and builds it from scratch, founding father. Until the point where he died in 2015, on the year he died, his nation's GDP was $308 billion. Malaysia's was 301. So he did it. So the only question is, what country did Lee Kuan Yew found? 45 seconds on the clock. What country is this? Yeah, if you know me, you know. What country is this though? It's a good story either way.
We said Malaysia. This guy is ethnically Chinese. A lot of things. What country did this man found? <laughs> Some. By the way, this is the all pro discussion, but you know, there's there's also some negatives to this man's story as well. But you know, we only have so much time. He's a fascinating individual. What country did he found? Ten seconds left. What is this country? Still a country to this day, still doing pretty well. Three, two, they are crazy rich nowadays. Who got it? Doug got it. Good guess, Chris, but not. That is the other answer, honestly. And it's not Thailand. It is Singapore, everybody. The great nation state of Singapore. Also the place where I grew up for six years. So cheating if you knew me. Uh, but otherwise, what are the scores at the end of the day? How do we do, guys? Wednesday nights. I was not caned. Thank you for asking. That's the problematic part. Not caned. Knew a guy. 31 for Doug. What happened with the old team? I think that means, is it 32, 1,352, sorry, you were close. I was, it looked closer, honestly, before that round. Um, great work, everybody, 30. 30, 31, Doug with the win. I should host trivia. Doug is so, Doug says he should host trivia, everybody. Um, that's gonna do it for tonight. Thank you so much for your support as we try to grow this experience. It's, it's totally in the script for me to say that, but it doesn't make it any less true. For those of us at Trivia Ronan, I'm Matt McNelly saying, just try a little harder to be a good person. That's all. Hope you learned something. We love you. And...